All right, guys, let's get into this. I'm a little curious. Joe Biden has announced, well, we already knew that he announced that he was, uh, you know, resigning from the 2024 election. Um, but this is, I guess, this is his official announcement, so I'm kind of curious about it. I, I just want to see what's going on. So, let's get it started. I see some Trump supporters apparently are a little upset because now, I guess, Trump's um, aim of criticizing Biden, like all the uh, whatever money they invested into that campaign strategy kind of goes out the window a little bit um, because <laughs> like they have to figure out a new campaign strategy against Kamala Harris, uh, which is kind of funny. At the same time, you know, I'm not, I don't know. I don't know how Kamala will do. I don't know. But let's just see. Let's just see this. Let's see what we got here. Guys, my fellow see. Americans. Yeah. I'm speaking to you tonight from behind the Resolute desk in the Oval Office. Do you think that's true, or do you think that there's like a guy, like in the Wizard of Oz, pulling a crank and talking, you know? In this sacred space, I'm surrounded by portraits of extraordinary American presidents. Yeah. Thomas Jefferson yep. wrote the immortal words that guide this nation. He's doing really well, but he's only 19 seconds in. <laughs> I'm so anxious. George Washington yeah. showed us presidents are not kings. Mm. That was like our first president, though. No? Abraham Lincoln who implored us to reject malice. Franklin Roosevelt, who inspired us to reject fear. Okay. I revere this office, but I love my country more. He what the office? I think he said revered. Reve ah, okay. It's been the honor of my life to serve as your president. Okay. Joe Biden, like 10 years ago, if you've ever seen him talking 10 years ago, would have been... He's sharp. He would have been a good president. <laughs> we got like the unfortunate worst part of Joe Biden ever, you know? But in the defense of democracy, which is at stake, I think it's more important than any title. I draw strength and I find joy in working for the American people. I will say one thing, because you can criticize Biden as much as you want, and that's totally fair, but this guy should be retired. <laughs> like, dude, if I'm 80 whatever years old and I'm like talking like this, I'm not trying to run a I'm not trying to run to the bathroom let alone the goddamn country i'm just trying to chill i'm just trying to relax and just kind of go you know pass away in peace so i'll give him that he's got like you know what i mean like he's 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 working well beyond uh the amount that he really needs to work i mean he's working until he's pretty close to him passing i i feel like although maybe this is the only thing keeping him going i don't know thank you for the two dollars from heavy j hollows over balls 24 7 i don't even know what that means brother but thank you but this sacred task. That was a really intense swallow. Task of perfecting our union. It's not about me. It's about you. Thanks, bro. Your families. Your futures. It's about we the people. And we can never forget that. And I never have. Hmm. I've made it clear that I believe America is at an inflection point. One of those rare moments in history when the decisions we make now determine our fate of our nation and the world for decades to come i mean that might be true like realistically speaking trump is the objectively worst pick for this situation right like we have to know that already um and even if you somewhat disagree you have to there's no if you're out there and you think trump is a good pick you, you're i don't even know how to talk to you if you think he's a better pick than like biden or kamal harris okay i guess i kind of get it at some aspects you're somebody i could talk to and reason with Trump is a bad pick. I have every objective metric. And him inciting a riot on January 6th to try to overthrow the government. That's like a huge deal. Like I think that people downplay that situation too much. It's really bad. It is worse than you probably think it is. And I haven't really super educated myself uh, uh, self about it until like somewhat recently, but it's like really bad. You know? He called everybody to a speech on January 6th, right? That's when they Firm who won the presidential election. Okay. Um, at the Capitol building, he riled people up saying things. Well, that we well actually this doesn't start there. Let's let's backtrack. It starts that after the election and, and the votes were in, Trump lost, and Trump used his legal right to contest the election, uh, claiming that there was voter fraud. Fair enough. It went to multiple courts. Every single court shot down every single thing. <laughs> That he said, even the conservative ones, shot it down. There was it was found that there is no 
meaningful, widespread voter fraud that had any impact on the election. The people that are like, oh, it's really suspicious that a lot of people voted for Biden. A lot of people voted for Trump, too, because more people were able to vote. You had a week to do it instead of just a day, and you could do mail-in ballots. So Trump took the L. That's fine. But then after that, he insisted that there was a deep conspiracy that stopped him from being president. The reality is, is he's an idiot. And people were like, oh, man, this guy is kind of dumb. <laughs> like, he dropped the ball on COVID. And a lot of people were just kind of sick of it. I understand why people voted for him in the first place. You know, they wanted to try something different. But I think a lot of people are realizing, like, ah, he's not like the, uh, the golden goose we thought he was going to be, you know? Like, what did he do? He got into office. He couldn't do anything with Obamacare. He promised that. Didn't really do anything at the border. Uh, his tax cuts were okay, but they were permanent for the rich people. They massively inflated our annual federal deficit with no financial return. Um, the middle class, it was very temporary, so he could dangle in front of you next election. You know, he pulled out of the Paris Climate Accord. I think most people are, to have, they want to deal with global warming <laughs> in general. They don't want to be as aggressive as somebody like AOC might want to be. But like that's ridiculous, um, you know. There's different things that he, he exacerbated tensions in the Middle East by declaring Jerusalem uh, like the capital uh, of Israel, which did not help in those relations, right? So didn't really have much under his name. His best thing was the economy was good. It was already doing pretty well under Obama, who like had things going in a good direction. The tax cuts that he did were not sustainable. Um, that's just the reality of the situation. Anyway, he insisted that there was a conspiracy. He called people to January 6th. After pushing this conspiracy for a very long time, he keeps saying we have to fight like hell. Now it's the time to fight, et cetera, et cetera. Rhetoric like that. People stormed the Capitol building. They broke through the windows. They broke through the doors. There was no police letting them in. That's another bullshit conspiracy. The police couldn't stop them because they were so, they were so overwhelmed. That's what happened to a point where they're like, okay, we can't do anything. We have to just allow them to go by us. But there were people attacking the police. They broke into the building. Hours passed. While this was happening, Trump made was completely silent, didn't say a single thing on Twitter, was trying to get in contact with Mike Pence to throw away, like basically um, go along with his plan to get him put in there by having faulty electors vote the way that he wanted people to vote. My understanding of the electoral process is we vote for our electors to vote. So, like, if you live in a state with 100 electors, the state's going to decide how they want to vote. But at the end of the day, like, you know, if everybody in New York votes, you know, for Biden, then all of our electors vote for Biden. But they don't technically have to. And so I think that's what he wanted to do. Put faults like seven faulty electors in my understanding to vote differently than what the people actually wanted. <laughs> Pence wouldn't go through with it. Then Trump finally went on Twitter and said, we don't want violence. Meanwhile, he was trying to call constantly him and Giuliani and you know, whatnot, trying to delay the vote. Okay, that is fucking insane. <laughs> that is him legitimately trying to overthrow the government. It's not a, not about Democrat or Republican. And God bless Mike Pence for doing the right thing. You know, he's somebody I obviously am going to disagree with when it comes to politic wise. But like, at least he's a he seems like a good person. A, you know what I mean? He had a little bit of fucking dignity. And Trump got so pissed there were people calling for t hanging Mike Pence, which is terrible. And then Trump's not going to use him again. Because he wouldn't go through with helping him overthrow the government. <clears throat> so that's a problem there. So, so Trump is objectively bad for our democracy. That's, that's just the reality of the world that we live in. And so really anybody, for the most part, is going to be better than Trump. I don't really know what else to tell you. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for the $2 from Silver Eagle. It's not you, it's me, Joe Biden. Okay, incredible. And thank you for the gifted sub from DIMC93. I appreciate that. So, yeah, man. Yeah. America's going to have to choose between moving forward or backward, between hope and hate, between unity and division. We have to decide, do we still believe in honesty, decency, respect, freedom, justice, and democracy. In this moment, we can see those we disagree with, not as enemies, or, but as, friends, as fellow Americans. He can got it. He got there. We're almost two minutes in, and he's already slurring. As well. yeah. Hey, takes me. I, I can't even get through two minutes without slurring myself, so you know what? Good for you, Biden. Does character in public life still matter? I agree. Yeah, I do. 
I believe I know the answer to these questions. Yes, character matters. I know a lot of people like to say, like, well, Trump says some pretty weird shit, but you know what? I think he's a good president. Part of being a good president is trying your best to communicate with everybody in a respectful manner. If you're the president of your fire department and you know your your audience in the fire department, like I'm just using fire department as a random example, you can talk a certain way and they'll understand exactly what you're saying when you talk. Understandable. When you're the president of the entire country, you have a hundred different bubbles of people that communicate differently. And you need to be extraordinarily careful about how you communicate because you don't want to unintentionally or intentionally dog whistle to one group, one thing, and another group, another thing. And that's something that Trump has done. You know, we've we've seen it. And I'm not even saying he's a bad guy. Like, there was the whole thing where he said, like, oh, they're sending, like, bad people, we'll say, across the border south. Do I think that Trump meant to say that all people south of the border were bad people? Censoring. No. But, like... You're talking to a hundred or a thousand different bubbles in the United States. So some people are going to see that as you a racist dog whistle. Racist people and people who don't want to see that racism are both going to interpret it that. I interpret it as like, oh, this is like an idiot. Not an idiot, but this is somebody who is uh, clearly a little too blunt in his language and not sensitive enough. That's a big deal. You want to make sure everybody understands exactly what you're saying to the best of your ability. You have to be very careful about how you speak. And that kind of decorum is very necessary to be a president as well. So... <clears throat> Because I know you. Who voted Kamala in since you're talking about further democracy? Like, I listen, I don't know exactly how the process is going to work. I don't know if, if Kamala is like 100% on the ticket or not, or if there needs to be another election or something. Or, But my thing is, is like, it's so interesting that you're, you're having a crybaby shit fit about Kamala Harris being the next one up to potentially be voted in president, but you don't seem to give a shit about Trump oh, trying to overthrow the government. And that's like why you're like, that's insane to me. So like when you hear Trump try to overthrow government, your first response is like, well, what, what about the thing that's not nearly as bad that the Democrats are doing? And it's like, what's not equal? We're not, we're not on equal playing fields here in any capacity, just to be clear. American people, and I know this, we are a great nation because we are good people. When you elected me to this office, I promise to always level with you. To tell you the truth, and the truth, the sacred cause of this country is larger than any one of us. And those of us who cherish that cause, cherish it so much. I'm uninformed. What did, what, what did I say that was uninformed? Or are you talking to somebody in the party, uh, in, the, in the chat? I don't even know. I gotta stop getting so locked. The cause of American democracy itself we must unite to protect it. You know, in recent weeks, it's become clear to me because I, I would imagine that since it was Biden Harris that won the nominee, that she would just take that place now. Choose your vice president. Who gives a shit? You know? <laughs> Who cares? Frankly, I don't know. I think I think that she could win. Why not? I need to unite my party in this critical endeavor. Oh, you were talking to somebody else. Okay, fair enough. Ever. I believe my record as president, my leadership in the world, my vision for America's future. All merited a second term, but nothing, nothing can come in the way of saving our democracy. That includes personal ambition. So I've decided the best way forward is to pass the torch to a new generation. That's the best way to unite our nation. Well, the new generation isn't Kamala like 50? <laughs> it's not exactly the new generation, <laughs> but okay. You know, there is a time and a place for long years of experience in public life. There's also a time and a place for new voices. Sure. Fresh voices. Yes, younger voices. And that time and place is now. Why do people hate Kamala so much? You want to know like the real reason people probably hate Kamala? Right? I know a lot of people, um, they'll talk about how, you know, when a woman, when a man stands their ground and is, a, is an assertive leader, they're like championed as an assertive leader. But when women do it, they, they're considered a bitch. And part of that's true. But also some women, in my opinion, and not all women will try to overcompensate and try to be too authoritative when they're in positions of power because they feel like they need to, um, they feel like they need to, you know, make their mark and like stand up to other men in some capacity and like, listen, I'm the leader now. And I feel like maybe part of it's that maybe she's trying a little too hard to be authoritative in some instances, you know? Also, she's kind of a, just the way some of the ways she talks just is, can be annoying, I guess. I, I just doesn't I don't care anymore about like little things like that. We literally have fucking Trump. <laughs> it's so bad. You know? You know what I mean? So it's like, 
I think that I think that there was a bill where she overly there's one thing they talk about is like she overly uh, put people in jail for like marijuana crimes. That's not good, but I'm also not super concerned with that. That's more of a system issue. So <clears throat> for the next six months, I'll be focused on doing my job as president. That means I'll continue to lower costs for hardworking families, grow our economy. I'll keep defending our personal freedoms and our civil rights from the right to vote to the right to choose. I'll okay. keep calling out hate and extremism. Make it clear there is no place, no place in America for political violence or any violence that ever, period. I'm going to keep, keep speaking out. I don't think Michelle Obama would do very well right now. I honestly think that, like, for Trump, you might need somebody to match his energy a little bit. And Kamala Harris seems like the kind of person that can match Trump's energy and kind of yell a little bit and get, like, a little bit in the, in the mud. I feel like we need somebody that's still better than Trump but that will sink down a little bit, you know, to that level. To protect our kids from gun violence. Our planet from climate crisis is the existential threat. And I will keep fighting my, for my cancer moonshot so we can end cancer as we know it because we can do it. All right, cool. And I'm going to call for a Supreme Court reform. See, guys, Boogie's going to survive. They're going to end his very real cancer. Reform because this is critical to our democracy. Supreme Court reform. Yeah, we need Supreme Court reform. The way that I would do it is you need every election cycle. The president oh. should be able to choose a Supreme Court justice and then retire the oldest one. We need to stop with this bullshit because Trump should not have gotten three shots. Obama was entitled to one of those justices. The conservatives delayed it for like a, over a year to not let him get a Supreme Court elect uh, person to elect. And then Trump sacked the fuck out of that court. There's a fundamental flaw there. There's a fundamental flaw with that. So they need that's what that needs to happen. We, every single cycle, they need to the, 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 that president every cycle, get, like whoever gets inaugurated. They get their own Supreme Court justice, retire the oldest one. Next cycle, whoever wins gets another one. Even if it's the same person twice, then they get two in a row. Good for them. But that would be so much better. That would be so much better. You know, I will keep working to ensure America remains strong, secure, and the leader of the free world. I'm the first president in this century to report to the American people that the United States is not at war anywhere in the world. Mm. Well, I think we're in proxy situations, but okay. Thank you so much, Lee, for the five dollars. What's up, Pop? I love your videos and Instagram reels. Always keeping it real and making me laugh my ass off. Keep up the good work. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. We'll keep rallying a coalition of proud nations to stop Putin from taking over Ukraine and doing more damage. Mm. We'll keep NATO strong, which is very strong, man. Like, what's a very important thing? Nobody wants to have issues with Russia or give money to Ukraine. But the reality is, is that Russia continuously pushes boundaries. They try to take over as much land as possible, and they are antithetical to our way of life. They don't have freedom of speech. They don't, they're not able to vote freely. unless Maybe Putin's just a great president that's been there for 20 years. It's a shit country. People are great, but the, that's not democracy. Well, there's three superpowers. It's America, China, and Russia. They're all, we're all a threat to each other. In my opinion, our ideals are the best. If you disagree, go live there. I don't care. Right, we we're the freest countries for our own people. We have flaws, but we're the only ones that are really allowed to talk about the flaws. <clears throat> so, like, we need to make sure Russia doesn't push and overextend any level of power anywhere. That's just the reality. So, I, we have to be strong when it comes to Ukraine. And I'll make it more powerful and more united than any time in all of our history. I'll keep doing the same for our allies in the Pacific. You know, when I came to office. Conventional wisdom was that China would inevitably, would inevitably pass the United, surpass the United States. Hmm. That's not the case anymore. Yeah. I think they're still considered a developing country until like 2030, which is fucking crazy. They're the second largest economy in the world. And I'm going to keep working to end the war in Gaza. Bring uh, home all so the hostages. Thank you for the five dollars from LM09956. Supreme Court, isn't the court with lettuce, tomato, and pickle? Yeah, and sometimes mayonnaise and ketchup, brother. It's so stupid. To bring peace and security to the Middle East and end this war. We're also working around the clock to bring home Americans being unjustly detained all around the world. You know, we've come so far since my inauguration. On that day, I told you as I stood in that winter, we were stood in a winter of yeah. peril. 
got the there. winner of possibilities. He got there. Possibilities. You know they couldn't do any cuts in this video, or else conservatives would have fucking shit themselves. Possibilities. <laughs> we're in the grip of the war. We were in the grip of the worst pandemic in a century. Yeah, true. The worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. Yeah, that was the Great Recession. That's what uh, Obama inherited from um, George Bush. Horrible recession. Really bad. One point four. We went from having a surplus to a one point four trillion dollar annual federal deficit. We were spending more hundred one point four trillion dollars more per year over what we were taking in under Obama. He got that down to six hundred fifty billion, and he turned the economy around pretty good. Then Trump took that and said, "Fuck it, let's give dumb tax cuts that we don't need," and he inflated that back to a trillion before COVID, and then handled COVID like shit. Like that's the timeline of events. <laughs> let's be absolutely real. The worst attack on our democracy since the Civil War. Yeah, that's January 6th, yeah. But we came together as Americans. We got through it. We emerged stronger, more prosperous, and more secure. Today, we have the strongest economy in the world, creating nearly 16 million new jobs, a record. Yeah, and some of that is because we came out of COVID, understandably so. But every president's still going to take credit. Like, Trump took credit for, like, half of the, you know, a lot of the economic, uh, uh, what the fuck am I saying? economic uh, positives of Obama. So. Wages are up. Inflation continues to come down. The racial wealth gap... Cutting stack tax isn't stupid. The problem is, is that like we need to lower our tax spending before we cut taxes. You know, And the reality is, is that we need rich people to pay more money in taxes. We need to figure out a better way to get people to stop engaging in like loopholes. That's what we really need to do. It's the lowest it's been in 20 years. We're literally... Sorry, let me just go in. The race record. Wages are up. Inflation continues to come down. The racial wealth gap is the lowest it's been in 20 years. Who do I think Kamala should choose as her VP? I don't really know. Um, pro realistically speaking, probably a white guy. Probably a, a smooth white guy. That sounds shitty, but like the reality is from an optics position, people are going to be hesitant about voting for a black woman. Um, like a not, like Especially a lot of racist people. And you need somebody to counterbalance that. Like, just like we, for Trump and Obama, they were very new to politics. Well, Trump is completely new. But they got uh, career politicians to that had good, the decent credibility with their party to join. Obama got Biden. He was a career politician who had, like, he was pretty active in getting people from both sides to kind of agree on things. And then Trump got Pence, who was, like, a career politician that was, like, generally respected in the conservative community. So, like, Kamala Harris needs to kind of uh, shore up that issue. So it's going to have to be, like, a pretty smooth white guy. <laughs> That's pretty much what I think that she needs uh, more than anything else. Uh, frankly, the white guy, and I'm not, I don't mean to say this either, but the white guy has to be straight. <laughs> it's got to be a straight white guy. It's got, not, I don't care, but it has to be a straight white guy because, like, there is going to be people that are more conservative leaning that are going to want to vote that don't want to vote Trump. But, like, if they see just a black woman on the ticket, they're going to be like, oh, fuck. But if they see somebody else, they might be like, all right, all right, we could do this. You know, that's just the, that is the unfortunate reality. So a handsome white guy. That's not gay. So sorry, Pete Buttigieg. Um, that's just what you got to do. We're literally rebuilding our entire nation, urban, suburban, rural, and tribal communities. Manufacturing has come back to America. We're leading the world again in chips and science. And I love chips. Innovation. Especially baked ruffles. Mm. Sour cream and cheddar. Maybe that guy Gavin Newsom. He seems pretty smooth. Again, I'm not super... I haven't been super into politics in a while, you know? But I don't I don't really know exactly who, who can deal with that issue, but... We finally beat the <laughs> farm after all these years to lower the cost of prescription drugs for seniors. And I'm going to keep fighting to make sure we lower the cost for everyone, not just seniors. More people have health care today in America than ever before. Yeah, cool. I sign one of those it's fucking expensive, man. I'll tell you, my wife and I are paying 650 bucks a month with a $5,000 deductible and a 7000 out of pocket. That's fucking brutal. And that's through her work. It would be like $2,000 a month without that. It's crazy. A significant loss helping me. How does he sound the most coherent ever? Is this AI? No. I think a lot of it is, is that he's not under a significant amount of stress, and they probably maybe gave him multiple takes. He's in a calm environment where he's gets to talk and he's rehearsed like this speech you know i don't think joe joe biden like if joe biden was your grandpa you'd be you'd be pretty you'd be like wow grandpa's still fucking talking like a goddamn coherent person but when he's under levels of stress this this dude he can't talk he's not gonna be he can't like that's the problem he's gonna have a difficulty making decisions 
in the White House. That's the biggest issue, right? Um, especially since you see presidents before and after, they like age ten years and four years, you know, because it's so stressful. So yeah, I don't think it's AI. Millions of veterans and their families <clears throat> were exposed to toxic materials. You know, most significant climate law ever, ever in the history of the world. The first major yep. gun safety law. Plus, this is only ten minutes or eleven minutes, not like an hour or a half. You know, thirty years. And today. Violent, the violent crime rate is at a 50-year low. Okay. We're also securing our... I believe that. The problem is is that people feel like crime is up more and more every single day. And it's because we uh, people need to just acknowledge this behavior. It's we, uh, we have so much social media that every single bad thing that ever happens across the world gets beamed into us instantaneously. So, like, every minute there's a crime being committed. That doesn't mean that, like, it's actually as bad as you think. But when all you're seeing is... Oh, violence, 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 violence. You think it's everywhere when it's not. Year over year, we have been safer. Our border. Border crossings are lower today than when the previous administration left office. I've kept my commitment to appoint the first black woman to the Supreme Court of the United States of America. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I also kept my commitment to have an administration that looks like America and be a president for all Americans. Mm. That's what I've done. Just for the record, I love black women. Okay, that was a joke. Don't fucking cancel me, dude. <laughs> I ran for president four years ago. I'd walk personally. Because I believed and still do that the soul of America was at stake. The very nature of who we are was at stake. Does Trump still plan on getting rid of Obamacare? He can't. He got rid of the uh, requirement that would make it so that you would get taxed if you didn't have insurance. That's pretty much all he was able to do. And that's still the case. America's an idea. An idea stronger than any army. True. I love America. Bigger than any ocean. True. More powerful than any dictator or tyrant. Very true. I love it's America. It's the most powerful idea in the history of the world. True. That idea is that we hold these truths to be self-evident. Yes. We're all created equal. Endowed by our creator with certain inalienable rights. Life, liberty. Yeah, no no aliens. Get out of here, aliens. If you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Just fucking around. Pursuit of happiness. We've never fully lived up to it. To this sacred idea. Yeah. But we've never walked away from it either. And I do not believe the American people will walk. Yeah, Obamacare still exists. The only thing that Trump was able to get rid of was that it used to be that you would have to pay more taxes at the end of the year if you didn't have insurance. And that was supposed to incentivize people to actually get insurance, especially young people. Um, the idea was like share the cost of the financial burden with everybody to some degree. So, yeah, we still have Obamacare. You could still call up right now and, like, you go through the thing and they'll try to get you insurance based on the amount of money you make. Yeah, of course. Walk away from it now. In just a few months, the American people will choose the course of America's future. Yeah. I made my choice. I made my views known. I would like to thank our great Vice President Kamala Harris. She's experienced. She's tough. She's capable. One thing, and maybe this is just my uh, political ignorance, I haven't really seen much from her at all. Like, she didn't really do much in from what I've seen. She didn't seem particularly active in, in this presidency. Maybe I'm just, like, ignorant to that, but that's not going to help her because I don't think anybody really attributes the successes of Biden. He's had some successes. He codified gay marriage. He's been very strong in the wars with our allies around the world. I think these are very important. Um, You know? I don't think that she's going to be able to, to ride any of those successes in any like meaningful capacity. So, She's been an incredible partner to me and a leader for our country. Now the choice is up to you, the American people. When you make that choice, remember the words of Benjamin Franklin's hanging on my wall here in the Oval Office, alongside the busts of Dr. King and Rosa Parks and Cesar Chavez. The busts? <laughs> I, I like to see Rosa Parks bust. Well, actually, that's sorry, that's disrespectful. God bless her. You know, when Ben Franklin was asked as he emerged from the the, the the convention going on whether the founders have given America a monarchy or republic, Franklin's response was a republic if you can keep it. A republic if you can keep it. Whether we keep Oh, yeah, he got uh, Mexico to agree to pay like a billion and a half dollars for border wall technology. That's a big deal, too. You know? Keep our republic is now in your hands. My fellow Americans, it's been the privilege of my life.
to serve this nation for over 50 years. Nowhere else on earth could a kid with a stutter from modest beginnings. Oh, yeah, somebody said he had a stutter already, so maybe his age is going to exacerbate that issue, too. In Scranton, Pennsylvania, Claymont, Delaware, one day sit behind the Resolute Desk mm. in the Oval Office as President of the United States. But here I am. That's what's so special about America. We're a nation of promise and possibilities, of dreamers and doers, of ordinary Americans doing extraordinary things. I've given my heart and my soul to our nation like so many others. I've been blessed a million times in return with the love and support of the American people. I hope you have some idea how grateful I am to all of you. The great thing about America is here, kings and dictators do not rule, the people do. And the rich people who buy drugs and then massively inflate the prices of them so that people die. History is in your hands. The power is in your hands. The idea of America lies in your hands. You just have to keep faith, keep the faith. And remember who we are. We're the United States of America. And there's simply nothing, nothing beyond our capacity when we do it together. So let's act together, preserve our democracy. God bless you all. And may God protect our troops. Thank you. I thought it was decent. <clears throat> Honestly, I mean, I think that was a pretty respectful bow out. Um, you know, I mean, B Biden has been pretty consistently respectful through the campaign or in general as president campaigning, etc. cetera. Uh, I can appreciate that. I'm hoping that a lot of people appreciate that, even if they're not the most vocal people. Most of the comments are full of people just kind of uh, trolling a little bit. Um, but I do hope people will take that. And they're like, yeah, you know what? I can respect and appreciate what he because I do. I can respect and appreciate what he's saying. So I just, if if it's going to be Kamala Harris, hopefully she can prove herself in the debate stage with Trump. We'll we'll see how that goes.